your holy name bless your holy name hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord thank you Father we bless your name bless your name Father, we just thank you this morning. Thank you for those that are watching through streaming. Hallelujah. And we thank you for those that are here with us today. Forgive us of our shortcomings. If there are things that we may have said or done. Hallelujah. We just ask you to forgive us, O oh Lord. Father, if we have said anything about our relatives, O oh Lord, that contradicts your word, we want to say we are sorry, O oh Lord. Forgive us. And this morning we are grateful for the breath of life. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our lives right now. Remember your word, O oh Lord. Thank you for the impartation that you will touch our hearts. And for this we give you praise and honor in Yeshua's mighty name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. just want to say good morning to everyone. And um, for those that are watching through streaming this morning, and uh, we have a special welcome. Uh, Nikki is here with us um, on her way to Dubai from Fiji. Yes, um, it's uh, with great pleasure we want to welcome her to our service this morning. And... Um, just pray that uh, that the Lord is going to bless us together and as we listen to what he's got to say to us today. And uh, also the boys, Taltalmika, Noella, and the children. And um, welcome to everybody that's watching, um, I believe from the United States, uh, in England, in Fiji. I don't have the list, we'll, we'll get there uh, shortly after the uh, service. And uh, if I did mention your name, um, I noticed there's a couple in America, I didn't quite get uh, their name, but um, welcome if you're here with us again um, this morning. It is a bright morning in Sydney, a little uh, cold, and um, we are very blessed that we live in a world in a time like this 
where you look around and you see things that are happening. And one day all these things are going to come to an end. And we know that end is very close. My question this morning, are you preparing yourself for this end? The Bible says in Thessalonians that first we'll hear the sound of the trumpet and the Lord and then those that are dead, that are, that are, that are with Christ, with Yeshua, are going to be taken up. And those of us, if you're still alive and you've got Yeshua in your life, we're going to be caught together in the air. It, it's, a, it's a dramatic event that the world has never seen before. Um, someone appearing in the cloud, you know, Yeshua or Jesus said to the disciple, it's going to be like the days of Noah. The days of Noah, he was telling them that the world is going to be flooded. But the, uh, the Bible said that it hasn't rained. How can there be a flood when there's no rain? And people were laughing at him. And the same thing, if I'm telling you now that the Son of Man is going to appear in the clouds, no one has seen that. But uh, the Word of God says it. And I believe it. Hallelujah. So my question is, are you prepared? Because this morning, we have a, an amazing conversation. I'd call it conversation. Let's, lead, let's read our, um, our text first. It's in uh, Psalms 103, chapter 103, verse 1. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I've written a few Hebrew letters this, because today we're going to go deeper into the word to understand why is David, King David, the psalmist in this case, is speaking to his soul. That's what's happening here. It's a conversation that David is speaking to his soul and he said, and all that is within me. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at the word bless in Hebrew, barak. But barakik, that means you bless. It's a, it's a pronominal suffix there. And oh my soul, napesh, napashi. It means that um, my soul, eh? my soul. And then the word said, and all that is within me. You know, how many of you know the number of things within you? Huh? Today we're going to see that. And every one of that, David is commanding it today to say, bless the Lord. We're going to have a look at the meaning of the word bless. Uh, soul in Hebrew. I'm going to also touch a little about heart. Because there's a confusion in what is heart and what is soul. Okay, sometimes heart, and we'll see in the scripture later, is referred to as spirit. So spirit and soul, and today we're going to have a look at that. And it's very, very important for us to understand uh, the word of God. Hallelujah. So I've written here um, a little note for introduction. I have, we have heard this verse preached or read to us, built within this 16 word verse. That's in the King James translation. Are things pertaining to the enhancement of our relationship with Adonai, with Elohim, with God. Uh, Elohim is Hebrew word for God. And precisely his soul and his body. And that's actually what David is doing. Speaking to his soul and his body. So this morning we're going to look at the word that is translated as bless in your Bible. And the word bless, David is saying to his soul, you bless. Uh, the word Lord is not a reference to any Lord, by the way. Uh, it is a reference to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I believe we live in an age of details. In the age of separating the holy from the profane. When you say Lord, anyone can turn up. Okay? That's Lord Shiva. Uh, every Lord is everywhere. So, when you are speaking, oh Lord, you need to be specific to who you're talking to. 
Hallelujah. And Lord in this case is actually in the original text of Hebrew is yod hey vav hey. Sometimes people say it's Yahweh or Jehovah or Yehovah. Hallelujah. That's what he's saying here. David is saying to his soul, you bless Yahweh. You bless the Lord. And everything that's in with me, my heart, my liver, my blood vessel, and everything in me, you bless his holy name. That's what David is saying to us today. So when it says about Lord, you must be careful. You can talk to that Lord that you mean. Because there's a lot of Lord. Because Lord in Hebrew is master. Somebody else can be your master. Hallelujah. Uh, you go to Fiji, there's a, a lot of things are happening in Fiji. Um, just a few, few uh, I think it's last month, a few weeks ago, there is this pastor that has been, uh, I think the, he went to court because he actually raped two young ladies. It's a pastor. Why does that happen? He's supposed to be a Christian because he's saying Lord and he doesn't even know the Lord that he's worshipping. The Lord that he's um, saying uh, hallelujah to worship your Lord. So we need to be specific and understand that the Lord that we serve is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That's very important for us from the start. Now let's have a look at the word <coughs> baraki, which brings to us the translation, my soul. Okay, it is an inflection of the lexical root, barak means to kneel. So when you, when you're saying you want God to come and bless you, you're actually saying to him to come and kneel before you. Huh? Eh? For, eh, you say that to a chief in Fiji, you're really asking for something that's uh, big trouble. Eh, if you ask a chief, hey, come and kneel before me, chief. Eh, that's a no-no. But here you're asking him to bless you. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this word so that we can understand what is happening. I remember studying this word and I said, kneel, I said, Lord, a few years ago, how can I ask you to kneel? And he showed me a vision of a man that was working. Had a tough day at work. And then, on his way home, he's got his jacket over his shoulder and his briefcase on his side. And on his way home, he opened the door and there was his little baby crawling on the floor. You know what happened? What would this man do to pick up the baby? And kneel down to pick up the baby. And the Spirit showed me the reason why he's not kneeling down because you're no more that baby. See? Even though you're a grown up, we should have a spirit like a baby. Right? When you say to a baby, um, hey, we, uh, Christmas is tomorrow, hey, the baby will believe it. So we must have that kind of faith. And why God is not blessing us? Because he comes and this man is standing up there. In Fijian they call it Vangas eh? It's not a baby anymore. So God cannot kneel down to pick up that little baby. That's how he showed me this. And... It's got no problem with the word, but it's my understanding of it. So to bless God is an act of adoration. So really, if you go back to that note, kneeling, it means kneel, but to bless God is an act of adoration. That means your spirit is kneeling before God. Oh, you are the creator of this universe. Hallelujah. According to Jeremiah, you saw my... You, you knew me even before I was formed in my mother's womb. You adore. It's an act of adoration. And can be, when you use it to man, it's not for adoration though, it's but for benefit. Hallelujah. You get me? Because when you bless God, you adore him. And when you say to somebody, bless you, you're speaking benefit to him. That's why we say shalom. Because we are trying to bless this person. Hallelujah. So, how is that? 
by the words of your mouth. Never underestimate the power of the word that you speak. And that's why we need to speak good words all the time. Because they can hurt you if you're not careful. Hallelujah. So, however, on the other hand, David can use the same word toward the soul, not as an adoration, but a benefit to his soul. Now, here, so you see there. Hallelujah. So, blessing God. When you talk about blessing, it's about blessing God. Hallelujah. And the verse is uh, Genesis 9.26. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. See? The Lord God of Shem. Hallelujah. And Canaan shall be his servant. So when we pray, one of the options for adoration. Hallelujah. I don't know how many of you, especially those that have been learning Hebrew. You know, every morning when you wake up, you say, Shalom to your heart. Uh, this morning... Every morning I wake up and say, Shalom, Lavi, that's my heart. Shalom, Kali, that's my liver. Shalom, um, um, my kidney, sorry, my kidney, my liver, um, and my intestine. You speak to your body. You speak to your body because they understand when you speak to them, hallelujah, when you say good things to them. They uh, are fashioned to appreciate that. So, <clears throat> blessed be God of Sham, the uh, Canaan. So, when we pray, one of the options for adoration is Baruch Adonai Elohe Sham. Baruch Adonai Elohe Sham means blessed the Lord, bless Adonai, the Lord of Sham. So, if you want to say uh, Baruch, Adonai Elohe means bless the Lord my God. Elohe, Elohe is, sorry, is my God and Elohe or the God of Shem. Elohe Abraham, Elohe Isaac, uh, Elohe uh, Yaakov, the God of Jacob. But if you want to say the Lord my God, bless the Lord my God, you just simply say Baruch Adonai Elohe. Baruch Adonai Elohai. That means you are saying, bless my God. Bless the Lord my God. Hallelujah. So if you're blessing people, it says in Numbers chapter 24 verse 9, in Numbers verse 24 verse 9, he crouched, he lay down as a lion. There you go. Um, who shall stir him up? Bless Barak is he that blessed thee, and curse is he that cursed thee. These are the words of this uh, prophet Balaam when blessing the Israelites. See, this king of Moab, Balak, came and wanted this priest to curse the Israelites. Hallelujah. Curse the Israelites. Instead, the Spirit appeared to him and he blessed the Israelites instead of cursing them. Hallelujah. So it didn't go well with Balak. So God used this word when blessing Abraham. He said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 verse 13. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Carefully note the implication of this verse. All the families of the earth will be blessed when we bless the people of Israel. I encourage us, the moment when you pray as a family, try and speak a word for the nation of Israel, the, the, the city of Jerusalem. Because that's the word of God. I will bless those that bless you. And I will curse those that curse you. Hallelujah. And the blessing of Abraham is all on his children. You know, some of us um, understand, even, even, even the Muslim, the Middle East people, they are the, the children of Abraham. That's why they are blessed. That's why they, you know, they are so, they rich. They, they have so many things. Why? Because of the blessings of Abraham. Hallelujah. 
So it's very, very important for us to understand it. So, and this word is used for kneeling, to kneel down, as I said to you, uh, to kneel down. So you see in Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 13, Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 13, For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cupids long, and five cupids broad, and three cupids high, and had sat in it midst of the court, and upon it he stood, and he kneeled. Okay, that's the old English, kneeled, should be knelt. But anyway, that's the King James translation. And the word barak is used there. So barak actually means to kneel down on the knees. Hallelujah. As the scripture is showing us. So now we understand about blessing. And what did David said? He said, bless the Lord, O my soul. And he speak about soul. How many of us know the difference between your spirit and your soul? Huh? Soul actually comes from a Hebrew word, nepesh. Or nafesh, it's called or translated as soul and transliterated nafesh. So <clears throat> it's so important for us to also understand that this word is derived from the lexical root napash. It means to breathe upon, to be refreshed by a current of wind. Hallelujah. So another word that came up of the lexical root is the feminine noun Nepesh. It means the inner being with its thoughts and emotion. Hallelujah. So there you go. Your soul is where your emotion is. Your soul is where your thoughts are. That's where your soul is. And today we'll have a look at this word very carefully so that we know what David is saying. In Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 9 the Bible said she hath Born several languishes, she has given up the ghost. That's the Napesha. Her son, see, that's the breath. So the word Napesh is about the breath. So the breath that you have is a Napesh. Hallelujah. So this morning, it's also the inner being in its emotion. And in Judges chapter 10, verse 16, Judges 16, uh, chapter 10, verse 16, and they put away the strange gods from among them and serve the Lord. <clears throat> and his soul <clears throat> was grieved for the misery of Israel. Hallelujah. So when you are miserable, filled with grief, those ac activities take place in your soul. When you are miserable, when you have sorrow, thus that's the soul, man, that is happening, that is affected. Hallelujah. And we are also bitter. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 10. The heart knoweth is nepesh, bitterness, and a stranger does not uh, intermeddle with joy. So we look at the heart and its meaning here. See here, the word heart is there as well. So to avoid confusion, if you look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 10, the heart knoweth is home. Right? Bitterness and a stranger doth not intermeddle with joy. So you see, see you have heart knows is own. Uh, unfortunately, if you read the English, um, it's not quite clear that it involves the soul. Because when you look at the original text of the Bible, you will find the word is own is actually should have been his soul. It's got the word nepesh there in the original text of your Bible. So uh, sometimes it's very confusing. That's why we need to understand the word from his um, original perspective. So the heart knows um, his own. So if we look at the heart, its meaning is to avoid in confusion with the soul. Since both words are used in this verse, we take this opportunity to, to understand them. The word comes from lab, heart. This is not there is not much different between soul and heart. Considered as the seed of one's inner nature, as well as one of its components. Also used to describe the physical organ, and you find that in um, 
Second Kings chapter 9 verse 24. And Jehu drew a bow with his full strength and smote Jehoram between his arms. And arrow went out at his heart. And the word there is left. So that word is used for your heart. Hallelujah. Used for your heart. So it's also sometimes used as a mind. So and God saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth. And every imagination of thoughts of his heart. See, was only evil continually. The will and the mind. So, the word here is uh, heart, is lab, is actually uh, the imagination, your will and your mind. That's where your will is. Hallelujah. So, and the masculine noun in heart is in First Samuel. But the Lord looketh on the heart. Okay? So, this is when... He chose the king. Samuel went and chose the king. And look at how um, beautiful the boys as they present themselves before Samuel. And God said to him, no, 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 no. no. Don't worry about the out outward appearance because I look at the heart. That's where you make a decision. Hallelujah. So it's very important for us to see. That the part of the person that can be devoted to God. Your heart is what is devoted to God. First King 15, 3. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. And his heart, Lebam, was not perfect where the Lord is God. So in your heart is where you make a decision to follow God. That's where you make your decision to follow God. And your soul is the one that shows the action of what the heart decides. So if you can look at it like that. You are acting the way you are acting. Because your heart has made a decision. Hallelujah. To not follow God. So the reason why that is happening. Because my heart has made a decision not to follow God. And that's why things are happening in my life. That people are looking and saying. What is happening with him? What is wrong with him? No, it's not what is wrong with him. It's wrong, what is wrong with the decision of his heart. And he's only acting. He's in sorrow. He's going through all this emotion because of what his heart has decided. Hallelujah. This is also the part that seeks God. Hallelujah. We are here this morning and you are listening through streaming because you've made up your mind to be in the service. That's not a decision by your soul. It's a decision of your heart. To want to be here listening or in this auditorium. So 2 Chronicles 11:16, And after them out of all the tribes of Israel. Such as set their hearts. Lebab. To seek the Lord God of Israel. Came to Jerusalem. To sacrifice unto the Lord. The God of their fathers. Hallelujah. So. Again, we see the scriptures that are there. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So it's very important for us to understand that. And also, it is the heart that turns against people. Right? It's not your soul. It's your heart that turns against people. Exodus 14.5, the Bible says, And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants were turned against the people. So, what do we do? If you are hating somebody, you don't go and correct your soul. You go and correct your heart. Because that's where it starts. We are hating others because our heart decides to hate people. Hallelujah. So, the decision for us to hate someone is not in our soul. It's in our heart. The soul only carries out that emotion that your heart, from the decision that your heart uh, made. Hallelujah. So it's very important for us to understand that. And also, this part of the body, that the heart is also the one that is committed to the Lord. It's committed to the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, <clears throat> a lot of people ask me the question about, coming on Shabbat to come and have the service. And I say to them, this is what I say to them, the day does not save anybody. 
The day that you worship doesn't save anybody. You are saved by the blood of Jesus. When you believe him. But the law was never, never, never created or never made to bring salvation to a person. No, no sir. The law was made to bless you when you obey and to curse you when you disobey. See? So, what I'm saying to you, my heart is committed to obey God in this part of his word. Hallelujah. When I come on the Shabbat, I am committed to understand that the Lord commands me that I come and rest. Shabbat is actually the word meaning rest. We are supposed to be on a, on a Shabbat. We need to sit at home, have a service and go home and just share the word. That's all you do. And what God is doing, you are resting your body. And God is replenishing your mind, your thoughts. Hallelujah. We've all had a, a, a hard week. Some people work, some people go to school. Now he wants you a time of rest. If he can tell the land after 70 years, seven, seven years, to rest, then you are better than any other creation. You should come after every seven days, or after six days, on the seventh day, to just rest. Don't really have to go to church. Then you can go and do work on Sunday. Hallelujah. So a lot of people are doing that right now. So what I'm saying to you, it's my heart that is committed to serve God on the Shabbat. See, that's a decision from my heart. So in summary, really, if we look at that, the heart and the soul, the difference between the heart and the soul. Your heart is your character, your integrity, God's point of contact. He, this is, the heart is the one that he can discern. Ability to be committed to the Lord Devoted to the Lord. Whereas the soul is a breath of life. It expresses the decisions and or indecisions of the heart. Hallelujah. So whatever the heart decides, the soul carries out. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when things happen, it is your heart. That's why we need to be filled with the word of God. When somebody passes away in the family and you know... That he is with the Lord now. That brings relief. How oh, he doesn't even cry when his brother passed away. Why should I cry when I know that he's in a better place? Why? Who made the decision? My heart made the decision because of the word of God. So the reaction of the soul is no cry. Hallelujah. Uncertainty on the other end. Oh... I wonder what's happening. And I'm crying for my brother. Because I'm not quite sure where he's going to end up. But if you are confirmed in your heart. That the word said that he has made it to heaven. Then you should rest. And understand. Because I tell you what. When you are crying. When you are in sorrow. It's bad for your body. Because your body produces chemicals that are harmful to you. That's why it's not good to be angry. It's not good to... To, you know, to have sorrow. Hallelujah. So it's very important. <clears throat> a person is bitter in the soul because the heart decides to turn against an individual. Hallelujah. So God communicates through the heart. The heart decides to obey or otherwise the word of God in the spirit of the Lord to influence the heart. That's where God works, in your heart. That's where God works. But today we're not here to talk about the heart. I need you to just understand the difference between the two. Because David was actually talking to his soul. But David was talking to his soul. No matter what's happening to you. Right now if you're watching through streaming and you're having pain, bitterness, you're exhausted, you have sadness in your life. You need to, like David, say to your soul this morning, bless the Lord. In other words, bring all those to the Lord. Come and put it before him. Hallelujah. Do not forget the benefits. That's also we'll see today. What 
David reminds his soul, bless him. Because I'm going to tell you a whole lot more about the benefits. By the way, do not rejoice in the misfortune of others, including Israel. See, sometimes um, we, um, we, we, um, we, we are rejoicing because other people are suffering. You can see that around the world. Now, if you're doing that, then you need to really think that no one should be rejoicing when someone else suffers. Hallelujah. So, David is speaking to his soul. He said to his soul, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Don't forget his, his benefits. The soul rejoice. Ezekiel chapter 25 verse 6. For thus said the Lord God, because thou hast clapped thine hands, and stomp with the feet, and rejoice in the heart with all thy soul. See? Heart and the soul. Despite against the land of Israel. See, the Ammonites had this warning from God, rejoicing in the suffering of the land of Israel. So in your soul is where you rejoice. Why? Because of what the heart had decided. Hallelujah. So, who does the soul belong to? Brooks? Yes. The soul belong to God. And we see that in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. The Bible said, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Ezekiel was reminded, so are we this morning, that every soul belongs to God. One day we are going to stand before him in judgment. Remember, your soul belongs to God. I remember when he blew uh, the breath of life. The Bible said that God formed man from the earth. Of, from the earth. And then he blew to his, through his nostril the breath of life. In Hebrew, it's a, a nishmat chayim. Nishmat is also the spirit of God. And Nishmat Chaim brought the Napech Chayi. Napech Chayi means the living soul. So when God breathed his spirit, the spirit of man in, because the, and the life comes through man, and then that's why we are a living soul. Hallelujah. Animals are different because earlier on the, the Bible described them as Bema. Bema, which means in two words, ba ma. Ba means in, ma is what it is. With an animal, in it is what it is. It can be anything more than what it is already. That's the difference between us. As human beings, we can be whatever we aspire to do. Hallelujah. So it's very, very important for us to understand that this morning. Hallelujah. So our soul belongs to God. Remember that. Uh, belongs to God. And we were talking about benefits. What David is saying to his soul, bless him. You know, let me tell you, there are benefits that is there. And it's in Psalm 103, verse 2. The Bible said, Bless the Lord of my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Benefits is translated from a Hebrew word, gimule. Gemule in the masculine plural form, meaning his reward, recompense. He started naming all these rewards, encouraging the soul that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know what you're going through. You're going through sorrow. You're going through sadness right now. Maybe a relational problem. Hallelujah. You need to tell your soul, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And don't forget, the reward is here. Hallelujah. So benefits translated from the Hebrew word, gemulai, in the masculine plural, meaning to reward. And that's what David is saying to his soul. Hallelujah. How does this happen? What are the benefits? Okay. What are the benefits that David... Um, um, so if we see here, it's forgiveth all thy iniquities. Eh? Forgive all thy iniquities. Health in the um, health all 
Sorry, healeth all thy disease. Redeem thy life from destruction. And crown thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. And that's what David is saying to his soul. Why are you so long faced? Why are you so angry? That's what he said to Cain. God said to Cain, you know, why are you so angry? You know, if you are doing well, this won't happen to you. Now David is saying to his soul in this conversation, forgiveness in all thy iniquities. Healeth all thy disease. Hallelujah. Redeem thy life from destruction. Crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Hallelujah. Change your priority. Hallelujah. Because the next life is much longer than what you experience or you will ever experience in this world. So you need your iniquities to be forgiven. The next life is much longer than what you experience. But even in this life, he said, I will heal all your disease. As I said to you, if you're angry, it's bad for your body. If you're one that continues to be angry with these people, stop it. Because that's bad for your body. It secretes all poisonous chemicals in your body. They go into your bloodstream. They're stuck in one of your um, organs and they become uh, cancerous. Hallelujah. And to top it all, to crown thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Hallelujah. So, that is the soul. David is speaking to the soul. That's not all that David was talking to. He was also talking to everything that is within him. He said, and all that's within me. And all that is within me. He says in there, the word of interest is karab, meaning the midst, interior, or uh, the inner organs, the inner part, especially the inner organs of the body. So Leviticus said, but he shall wash the inwards, right? And the legs with water, and the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. Paul says that we must offer our body as a living sacrifice. Offer our body as a living sacrifice. So he's saying to his soul, Bless the Lord. And he said, for you, all, everything that's in with me, within me. Now, he's transferring from his soul and is coming to the body. See? David is speaking to his body. When you wake up in the morning, speak to your body and say, Shalom. Speak healing to your body. Be healed, my body. Hallelujah. So it's very important for us to understand that um, David was not only speaking to his soul, is also speaking to his body. So have a look at this word, vakal karvai. Is uh, we have no idea of all that's within us. You know, if I were to ask us today to get a piece of paper and write down in two minutes what you remember, what what all everything that is in your body. And I tell you what, after two minutes, you'll be lucky if you had 40 stuff written down. Why? Because we don't even know about ourselves. Everything in us. So it says there, no one is... I am going to give us this morning a little look in what is within you. So this morning we're going to have a little look on what is within you. And we go back to a scripture in Psalms 139. And the Bible says... Then I see my substance, yet being unperfect. Hallelujah. This is a, I love this scripture because the word substance comes from a Hebrew word, galmi. The word galmi means to wrap. Okay? When I'm speaking to you this morning about wrapping, now, if you look at the order in which a human being is formed in the mother's womb, hallelujah. We are only visible, not through the naked eyes, but in, 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 um, in, my, in microscope, microscopic lenses. We are only visible when the cell starts to divide itself. But before the cell divides itself, there is a stage that is not seen, called the wrapping. 
And the word galmi, which says here that your eyes saw my wrapping, that means you are not even visible to anything in this world. God's eyes has already seen you. And what's amazing about this word, it says, and in thy book all my members were written. That's your heart, your lungs, your intestine, uh, your body, every part of your body. He said, all my members were written. Hallelujah. This is, I'm reading from the King James here. He said, in your book, everything is written even before anything is formed. Even before the microscope can see you and me. I, your, your eyes have already seen me. And all my members, including my lungs, my eyes, my hair, every part of it is already written in your book. And I love verse 17. And he said, How precious also are also thy thoughts, uh, also thy thoughts unto me. O oh God, how great is the sum of them. Then he started to explain about how much God thinks of you and how he thinks of you. My Bible tells me that when God thinks of you, everything is pleasant. Hallelujah. He creates you though. So whatever he creates, it has to be perfect. So when, whenever he thinks of you, uh, uh, Nathan, whenever he thinks of you, Mini, when, uh, whenever he thinks of you, Nikki, he's, he, he's, he's looking at you and, and he said, oh, everything is pleasant about you. That's his thoughts about you. And he said this amazing verse, he said, you know, if I should count them, if I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. Wow! More in number than the sand. I told you, if you had a piece of paper, you wouldn't even write 40. I don't even know how much things is inside. But my God is telling me, every time he thinks of me, he thinks of every part of me, everything that I haven't seen, everything that no one has seen, only him, and the number of them is like the sand. I said to him one day, and I was praying about this verse, and I said, how come? How can that be? I can't even name 50 or 40. Hi. Let me show you something. I want us to just pause for a moment and consider the fact that God cares about you. I've written it up there. Sometimes more than we care for ourselves. He thinks of things you don't even know exist within you. Hallelujah. The moment he thinks of you, the number is more than the same. We are resigned to the fact that because he is God, he can do anything. I got news for you. God wants you to know how this is so. Now, we always take, as human beings, we always take the shortcut. Ah, he is God. He can do anything. You know, but I tell you about this God. He wants you to know the details about who you are. Hallelujah. He wants you to know the details about who you are. And I'm going to give you his thoughts. Just a little look at his thoughts. Okay? His thoughts is here. You know, the neurons, the scientists are saying the number of neurons in your brain, these are electrical um, um, things that flow through your brain that send messages to every other part of the body. You know, scientists are saying there are 86 billion. Wait for me, send. I'm coming. 86 billion neurons. And in your DNA, the chromosome combination or com chromosome co pairing of your DNA is 70 trillion combination. Wait for me, send. I'm coming. Count those two. 86 billion of your neurons and 70, I haven't even started with your hair. Your eyes, your hair that has fallen, the one that hasn't grown yet, they are all written in his book. And every time he thinks of you, he thinks of these 86 billion neurons and 70 trillion um, chromosome pairing of your DNA. He thinks of all this. And all of them, the Bible says to us this morning, is all pleasant. And here's David. And he's saying to us, and everything that's in me, including my neurons, including my DNA, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. How marvelous is that? 
Hallelujah. How marvelous is that? David is saying to his, everything within him, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. This morning, let me just read those verses again. In Psalms 103 verse 1. La David Barakin Abashi et Adonai Vekal Karavi et Sham Khadeshu. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And verse 2 this morning Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all the benefits. And I've read to you the benefits already. Hallelujah. Forgiveness of all thy iniquities. Heal all thy disease. Redeem thy life from destruction. Crown thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. So I want you to understand. Start today if you want. Wake up in the morning and you say, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And everything that is within me, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. God wants you to know who you are. God wants you to know what happens to you in the morning. Hallelujah. It's uh, marvelous to understand that this God cares for you. And every thought he thinks of you, it is all pleasant. Hallelujah. We're going to cross shortly to Lotoka for our communion. But I just want you to bow your heads and pray with me this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're going through right now. I want you to practice and start to say, bless the Lord, O my soul. You sadness. What you need to do is go and say to your heart, remember the word of God. Remember what the Spirit had led you to. And the heart is going to change its attitude toward the wood. And then your soul shall follow. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. We are blessed because you think of us. We are blessed because you knew us even before we were formed in our mother's womb. Your eyes saw our substance even before they were formed and every member of our bodies are written in your book even before they were formed. Father, we thank you this morning for everybody that is listening and everybody that is watching right now. Hallelujah. And I pray through this streaming, O oh Lord, that your power, that your Ruach HaKodesh, will begin to touch them. Your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And this morning, Father, we just thank you for creating us. And this morning, for calling us and telling us who we are, O oh Lord. And Father, we give you praise. In Yeshua's mighty name we pray and everybody say with me, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to cross over to Lotoka, Emmanuel. Hallelujah. And who said my boy opened the door? I will cut with him and see. Adonai Elohim who loved the world. And he gave his own his father and son, Yeshua. And whosoever believeth in Yeshua shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeshua, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread and gave thanks. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Um, he gave to his disciples and 
do the remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, Yes, put the cup and gave thanks. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Orei Peri Hakusen. Disciples and said, "This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Take and drink, or as often as you do this." You do this in remembrance of me. For oh, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you play part of thy death and become. Yeah. Man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For if anyone eats and drinks without recognizing the body of Adonai, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are sick. The number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. And we are judged by Adonai. We are disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. And Father, as we come before you this day, we appropriate the ten divine exchanges on the cross. Yeshua was punished. And we are healed of all our sicknesses and all our diseases. Yeshua was wounded for our transgression. Yeshua was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Yeshua was made sin with our sinfulness, that we might be made righteous with his righteousness. And Yeshua was cursed that we might receive the blessings of Abraham. And Yeshua died for us that we might have everlasting life. And Yeshua endured poverty that we might share in his abundance. And Yeshua bore our shame that we might receive his glory. And Yeshua was rejected that we might be accepted by our Elohim, our Heavenly Father. Yeshua was cut off, that we might be joined to Adonai Elohim, our Heavenly Father. Finally, our old man was put to death in him, that the new man might come to life. And Father, as we come before you this day, yes, yes. we claim Amos 9-11 in our lives. That in that day, today, I will restore the fallen house of David. This house, Father, that you will repair its broken walls and restore its ruins and will rebuild it as it used to be. Amen. Speak to the Lord, and you may partake of the bread. Hallelujah. The Hallelujah. Ask everybody to partake of the bread. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you for the blood and the bread. The emblem, Lord, of the new covenant in the blood of Yeshua. Father, we thank you this morning for the seven exchanges. I pray, Father, that everyone that is listening, wherever they are, whatever the part of the world they are listening, O oh Lord, we ask you, Father, that you will touch them in your own special way, O oh Lord. Father, we just thank you this morning for our tithes and our offerings. Father, our heart that gives willingly, O oh Lord. Not only monetary, it's our time. 
not only in monetary and time, it's our words. Father, we thank you this morning for the lives of people as they prosper in your word, as they prosper, Lord, in the place where they are. And this morning is we come to you as we're about to finish from here. We remember the rest of the week that is before us. That you will go before us. That you will surround us. That you will be behind us, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you for those that are traveling overseas, Lord. We just pray for the blood of Yeshua on the airplane, on the boat, and the car. Father, we just thank you that they will continue to worship you. That this morning they will start by saying, Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And everything that is within me, bless his holy name. Father, we thank you this morning. We don't mention them in name this morning, but we know that they are listening, oh Lord. Father, whatever need is there in the heart, I just thank you that you will touch them. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for the people in Lotoka, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we also this morning speak of special blessing for Nikki, who's here with us for the first time, oh Lord. Living in two days, oh Lord, we just speak your protection over Father, we just thank you this morning <clears throat> that you are our healer. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for everyone that is contributed to the work in every part of the world, O oh Lord. Whether they be Methodist, whether they be <clears throat> Assemblies of God. Father, we just pray that you will touch them. Hallelujah. And this morning we most especially think of our nations all over the world, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Those that are beginning to, to know you, O oh Lord. And Father, we just thank you that this morning... You're going to touch every government, every leaders of the nation, especially Fiji, O oh Lord. We pray especially for Fiji right now. The leadership, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. We just thank you this morning that you are going to change, bring the change that needed to be done, O oh Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for our parents in Fiji, that they understand the children, the gifts from God, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've heard of reports everywhere, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. And it's not very good, O oh Lord, because we know that only you can change that. You can change that in Yeshua's mighty name, O oh Father, we thank you this morning as we're about to finish, O oh Lord. We just pray for all the tithes and the offerings, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. And for this we give you praise in Yeshua's mighty name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. We'll cross to Emmanuel. He's going to give us a blessing for this morning. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just want to say thank you to everyone that is watching from, um, I don't have a list here, so 
Um, once again, we want to thank you for being with us today. And uh, we want to give praise to God for your lives. And this morning I say to you, Shabbat Shalom and Shavotov.